Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another edition of the Buffalo Bills Roundtable. I know it's been a while. I wouldn't even categorize this as a roundtable. It's more like a candlelit dinner table for the Buffalo Bills. Exactly. Just two of us. As you can see, myself, Kevin, we are here. Z-Bot's at a charity dinner. And then Mario has the flu as of now. But we do sincerely appreciate each and every single one of you joining us today. Because, Kevin, I'll, like, I'm not sure about you, but opposing fan bases and even some Bills Mafia is trying to put out this narrative mm-hmm. that so we didn't do shit like right during this free agency. We've regressed significantly. We might not make the playoffs. I mean, it's sky is falling right now. So I'm assuming you're probably not under that impression. Thoughts overall on how the Bills have done so far go off. Yeah. I mean, you got to look at it from a perspective of, Compare it to last year's team, right? Yeah. And you can say right off the bat that Curtis Samuel is an upgrade to Deontay Hardy. Mm-hmm. I think based on all metrics and pretty much all the way he plays, Mac Collins is an upgrade to Trent Sherfield. Um, yeah. And then there's still high hopes, and we talked about it on your show before, of a receiver coming in that would take over as receiver two. So mm-hmm. the Bills offense has a potential to be more potent than it was, um, especially under another year with Brady. Um, and what Samuel and his separation ability, 3.3 yards, uh, the best in the league with Tyreek Hill, um, that that kind of separation mixed with Josh Allen and Joe Brady is going to be like something that the Bills offense was missing. Um, really yeah. great rack. Um, and the his ability at his 4-3 speed um, is going to be game changing for an offense that's now going to return a majority of its players, including, you know, five of its top six offensive linemen. They're two starting tight ends. Uh, for 12 personnel, obviously your receiver one that was much talked about. Uh, your running game is returning. Your your running back one and two essentially are back. Um, they didn't really do anything negatively to disrupt them offensively and defensively. All they did, Dan, was get younger. Um, so yeah. I don't think you can hate what they're doing at linebacker. Uh, they brought back Epinesa, their younger defensive end. Uh, their cornerback room is pretty stocked. Um, mm. And they just went a little bit younger and in some aggressive style players in rap. Uh, and recently signed a brand new safety too. So Edwards is going to look good in this defense. So I think that that is um, some upgrades with 11 draft choices coming in with some, some young players that are going to be cheap. I don't know how you can yeah. say this went, this window is close to be done. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like a lot of people put a lot of weight on Gabe Davis leaving and I'm not sure about you, but I really don't think that it moves the needle one way or the other for right. him. Right. I mean, there's definitely a deep ass draft class going into it. I wish Gabe Davis the best, obviously. And I love Curtis Samuel, but like, here's the deal. I've been trying to tell people because they just look at the numbers and they're like, oh, great. It's Curtis Samuel, man. Like, why doesn't Bean do anything? <laughs> like, why don't we throw a bag for a T Higgins trade or a Brandon Ayuk trade? First off, yeah. there's no way that we can make that happen financially. Otherwise, it would just be extremely irresponsible at that point. Would you say that Samuel's lack of production was more just like shit QB play yeah, <laughs> like, I, mean, through his list. I mean, you're talking about like Kyle Allen. I mean, <laughs> you're talking about a list of players who I don't even know if they're in the top 30. Um, if you break down who he's gotten to play with in his time and um, he's never really seen a player like Josh Allen mm-hmm. um, and the elevation that he had even on Cole Beasley, which Cole Beasley admits that he was his best version here. Um, and what John Brown was able to do coming out over here. So Gabe Davis was Gabe Davis because of what this Bills offense and Josh Allen is. I think it's a whole dynamic level that, yes, at face value, you have teams saying, I hope that doesn't work out. That guy's not great. Um, But you know in the back of their head they're saying, ooh, that combination could be deadly um, if that separation and speed is what I think it is because he's super good on deep routes, and most people wouldn't even know it. With Curtis Samuel. Oh, dude, dude. I mean, I definitely agree with you. Now, he's probably going to be like swapping like snap counts with Shakir out of the slot, or is like he going to be on the outside at any point? So the cool thing about him is Shakir actually has some proven ability to bounce to boundary. And just like what everyone used to tell me about Tyler Boyd is he's only a slot receiver, but he's not because that's where that's where the Bengals needed him. There's a lot of analysts and people that think that Boyd could have jumped outside if needed. But, um, you know, he's just always been needed in the slot. Similarly to Shakir, where he's had two boundaries the majority of his career and his young career. He's had some decent snaps at Boise State uh, playing on the outside. But Samuel is definitely 50-50. His numbers would reflect it. 
Um, so you're going to have some versatility. He's been in the backfield. He's the second best running back receiver in the league behind Samuel. Um, so uh, the other Samuel, I guess. So ultimately, um, he's a he's a really good in the backfield. That's kind of what they're trying to get a cheaper version with Hardy. He's really good out of the slot, and he's even better on the boundary. So I think you're going to see a, a, a multitude of positions for Samuel in this Joe Brady offense, who Joe Brady got the most of them, don't forget. Yeah, um, no, I do. Yeah, I do remember. So that. a lot of good connections there, but in the backfield, it's going to be dynamic, right? His yeah. best season was when Teddy Bridgewater was the guy, and it's probably his best quarterback too. <laughs> it was probably his best quarterback, best moving. And now, dude, I mean, I'm excited because there's definitely no question that Hardy was a disappointment last year. Now, yeah. punt returner and kick returner. What's is what are we doing with that? <laughs> what we got a combo there right now. It's Ty Johnson as a kick returner and probably Shakir as a punt returner. But yeah. I do think with all their draft choices, they're going to look for a return specialist, someone that couldn't change the game um, and only invest like a fifth or sixth round pick in doing so. That would be the current mold, in my opinion. Somebody in the fourth or the fifth. And I mean, I'll tell you what, like this draft coming up is just an entire different equation when it comes into yeah. it. Because I've been starting to think about a couple of things. Um like, no question, I feel like everyone's still beating the table for a receiver for the, you know, it's number 28, some want to trade up, et cetera. Some people are trying to go for defensive tackle. You mentioned a couple the other day uh, when we were talking, safety depth probably wouldn't hurt. I mean, unless people are, you know, happy with Edwards and happy with Rapp starting and then Cam Lewis and then also with Damar Hamlin as another backup at the end of the day. But um, I was thinking about left guard as well because now all we have is David Edwards. Right, especially if is McGovern is going to be moving over to center, I think that might even be like a sneaky need for the Buffalo Bills. Yeah, I mean it's starting to grow as the Bills start to fill in some of these other positions. Um, it's starting to really elevate on the list of people. Like, could they take a first round guard? Could they take a first round center? I don't know that there's one there, but it definitely is on the high level of of their needs. So I would yeah. say it's it's fair to say they like Edwards. They gave him a potential to earn starters money. Yeah. Um, but if they needed to, too, they could grab draft a center and then move McGovern back to, to the guard spot. So which, which, which would be ideal. Um, but maybe McGovern has proven at Penn state. He's a good center too. So if they find a stud left guard, that could make sense. Except for in the first round, because I feel like no yeah, one's going to be making be hype videos. And, yeah. I don't, you know, I don't like want to be doing, you don't be doing blocking clips. Dan, you don't um, want to be doing <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There's not many blocking clips. You really can't get okay. hyped over an yeah. offensive guard in the first round by any stretch of the imagination. A couple of super chats came in. Richie Fresh, thank you so much. Dan, let me make myself absolutely clear. TD is out of his mind and needs to be humbled this season again. I know he has to do it for ratings, but God, my friend, I've tried. I failed. I refuse to continue to try, my friend. I will just allow the universe to humble him like it has for the past four years. I'm fired up. And it's not even September. That's a that's an absolutely beautiful thing, my friend. Now, Kevin, right? With fucking the safety in Mike Edwards, right? I mean, I get it. Bucks, Chiefs was leading the league as far as turnovers, like for touchdowns, which is pretty exciting. But did you prefer Blackman as well? And did you oh, want Julian Blackman instead? I did. What he did do in the box is impressive. Now they are different safeties. I don't think it turns them off to the idea of both. Yeah. Um, because everybody says Edwards is best with a pure box safety with him. Um, and his ability and what he's been able to do playing all the positions, including the slot, he's actually a pretty good slot corner. So when okay. you need to drop down Edwards, and I think that's what the Bills liked about him, if you can drop him down, it's kind of like Micah Hyde a little bit. When you can drop him down and cover tight ends, he's pretty effective at it. Um, when he has some safety valves and he's the last line of defense and he has another uh, another safety on the field with him and one high might be his weakness if he's the only guy there. But as long yeah. as he has that box safety to kind of clean anything up, um, he's pretty effective. He's a ball hawk. He scores touchdowns. Um, he's an impressive looking safety that I think was drastically underrated when the Chiefs realized yeah. uh, we have a couple other guys we like, you know, that we're going to go with like, you know, Reed and. Um, Chamari Connor. Um, so they had a couple other guys that they liked, but all, honestly, yeah. that Bill's offense was rolling when he went off the field in the in the playoff game. Now there's no question that like, and so I wouldn't say that we improved in the safety position. I mean, maybe. I mean, we certainly got younger, right? I mean, that's 
That's it. From well, last year, you can say they got close, but no, I, you can't say that they've gotten at this moment better yeah. than because they had rap on the roster as a red already. So you yeah. can't say that Edwards replaces Poyer and Hyde. Yeah, 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 yeah. No way. But like, I mean, and so I read something like a few weeks ago and I brought this up was where that people are saying that safeties are now becoming the new running backs of the NFL. Yeah. where they're just not really as important because there's not many like defenses out there that I would consider to be elite. And if someone were trying to have me explain to them, oh, okay, why is this defense elite? And I start rattling off players. There's very few teams where I name a safety within the top three names that first come to mind. Um, I thought one guy ended up going into it, into the article by itself, where it's saying that since like they're running way more too high sets, that it's it's sort of forcing these offenses to pick like the middle of the field right in front of them, like short and intermediate passes rather than stretching it out. So a, a lot of these defenses can get away from having these like mid grade safeties and be fine. Like, I mean, I think like the perfect example would be the New York jets perhaps. Yeah. No, I mean, I think the jets are a good example of that. I mean, look, when you're in too high, it, it helps the defense in general, um, but it's, I mean, you saw a little rebirth of the safety position this off season for the first time in a while, that was a true statement, what you just said, but right mm -hmm. now you can kind of argue that it's kind of come back a little bit. Um, you know, it, there, there was definitely some players that got paid, but then you, you got like cam curls of the world who I thought were going to get 10 million plus, uh, really had to settle in free agency, but then you had like Savage yeah. who got like seven to eight, which is way more than I thought. I thought the bills would be on, on Savage at three or four. Um, yeah. so uh, so there, there was McKinney some payments being made. Too. Yeah. McKinney got paid too. From McKinney got paid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> got paid. But yeah, the Jets are rolling with Tony Adams and Chuck Clark, which is okay. Um, and then, you know, right behind them, they just have a JBC. Um, so it's not really, it's not a good safety unit in my opinion, but they can, they can improve that um, in the draft if they'd like. So I hope that we're definitely going to be able to improve it by itself. And like, there's so many different moves as far as what our defense might look uh, like. And like, it's going to really depend on who we end up drafting, whether or not that I can take this theory. With Babbage taking over, and I mean, it's still unclear if McDermott's going to be calling plays or if it's going to be him. We bring in that DB's coach from University of Miami. Yep. Um, from what I understand, his defense was very good at press man and like man coverage rather than zone. Yep. Is there a way where do you see this Bills defense making a slight shift? Like, oh, yeah, I, I mean, based on my my um, people that I have inside the organization and people that I trust, um, I've been told that the Bills chose a press man situation uh, that would help have Kyer Elam flourish because there's still very high hopes for him and his skill yeah. set and Brandon Bean um, and basically Sean McDermott, the same guy that people say don't adapt. Uh, chose his player over his coach, his longtime coach in Butler, uh, basically saying, we're going to elevate Bobby Babbage. He's made like four all pros um, and we're going to got, get a new, new DBs coach. Like it's just how it's going to go. Um, so see you later, um, which is, which is, which is smart. He's adjusting to the league and he's adjusting to his player's strengths, which you could argue you're going to get the most out of Taron Johnson. You're going to get the most out of Kyer Elam. You're going to get the most out of like, like Christian Benford's a zone corner. In my opinion, he's really yeah. good in quarters and cover three. Um, but other than that, you're going to get an elevation now with Edwards um, and rap. Uh, yeah. now maybe even Douglas uh, where you're, it's going to, you're going to get a big elevation and the, and the bills chose their, their, their players over what McDermott likes to do, which is a heavy zone cover three cover two um, yeah. quarters, quarters type of team. So he's adapting, and I think that that's in, that's impressive to see because I I sure as heck thought that they were just going to get rid of Kyer, um, yeah. but they actually went the other way with it and said, "Hey, look at what we did with AJ Epinesa, a guy everyone after two years said was done and probably cut. Now he's a re-signing, and now he's a big part of the Bills' defense." Yeah, it's no, I mean it's it's funny, and I really think that it's going to be telling if, say, for example, we go with a Cam Kinchins and so yeah. in the second. Or, I mean, um, so that one safety that's going to be like, I think he's like fifth, sixth round right now. His name's James Williams. He was James also Williams. He's, yep. he's six foot five. Um, he's pretty big for a safety. But say that we get either of those two, I think that's telling us everything that we need to know that we're going to be seeing an entire different scheme for this Buffalo Bills D. 
Yeah, I pulled up my chart just as you mentioned it on James Williams. I got kind of my uh, my scouting chart on him. Yeah, six five two fifteen, five star recruit. Um, he's on most people's big boards. He's he's as high as fifty second round pick on a, on some big boards, kind of averaging out in the fourth round. Um, yeah. He's definitely a guy that's been coached before um, and uh, by, by the staff, so they would know it. But he's going to be more of your box, which could be what they're interested in, more of your dime linebacker. He has some of those versatility skills. He ran a little bit better at his pro day. Um, so it's it's very possible that if they wait on the position a little bit, that with all those day three picks that uh, James Williams would be a guy that they uh, really like. But, but Dan, he's going to be a guy that either is going to fall or he's going to get super overdrafted. So it'll be interesting to see where he falls on that, um, on that, on that line. Yeah. No, I mean, I'm super excited. Richie Fresh, again, P.S., before I buy my chicken wing necklace, is there any discount code? <laughs> I think Dan works, and to be honest with you, shoot me a DM say it doesn't work. So have you ever seen this thing, Kevin? Yeah. That's, I think, well. <laughs> wild. It's, it's, I'm sure you're familiar with a chicken wing, but like a chicken wing as a necklace. I, have you seen it? I, I mean, that is the coolest thing I've ever seen. If I'm It's be called honest. the Lucky Wing. It's it's a Buffalo based company and they just have like a shit ton of different options. I just noticed that that was a chicken wing. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So... It was a chicken wing. I threw it on because <laughs> yeah, man, most definitely, most definitely, man. I saw it. I was like, I needed to have it. It was a dumb buy, but I love it. It's this simple boys, Samuel Diggs, cook and Kincaid. And they upgraded in upgraded Kelsey Tupac Shakir, then Benford Douglas with Bernard Rapp and Milano and sweat. Okay. He's big on Tavondre sweat. I feel like I brainwashed them, Kevin. I'm sorry about that. You don't <laughs> yeah. like sweat as much as I do, but <laughs> and tell me you I mean, don't have a raging game. I like sweat. I don't know that the Bills do. Yeah. Um, so I like mm -hmm. the potential of sweat and what he can do. Mm -hmm. Um, the Bills just have never put a precedent on bigger, stockier guys who can stop the run and clog space. Yeah. Um, they like the pass rush skills, and that's what they most people don't realize. That's what Daquan Jones is really good at top three in the league in pressure rates, really was top five before he went out in most pass rush categories. Yeah, and um, they they like big guys that can move. So, sweat confuses me a little bit on if the Bills would be interested, but they could switch there and just be like, Yeah, we like them, we're gonna get a space clogging guy. Um, but they've never shown the interest to do that. That's why I'm 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 bound to a guy like Johnny Newton. Um, I just think they'd rather have a, a ridiculous edge presence who can bounce outside on third down and rush the passer with that Oliver. I think that that's very intriguing to the bills, but still have the safety valve of going big when they need to against the run. I think that'll, that'll, that'll intrigue McDermott a lot. Johnny Newton should be gone, but if he's not, unfortunately, that's going to be a he very should be 28. Yeah. Yeah. He should be 28 at that point. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so I wouldn't hate it either because I feel like we're on the same page as far as the style of receiver that we're looking for, right? I mean, yep. you're really high on Lad McConkey, right? He's probably going to be late first. He probably could be early second. Keep him away from the Chiefs. That's my only just, thing. Yeah, just keep him his, away from the Chiefs. His style will work with Patrick Mahomes, period. Yeah. Yeah. My thing is, is that like I like I've accepted the fact that Brian Thomas Jr. It like is not yeah. gonna be there. And I'm not sure about you, man, but I just don't have a good feeling that we're going to trade up in the first. Yeah, I don't either. I, I think they want really these young good. contracts. Like, yeah. Well, they trade a fourth or a fifth to move up a spot or two. It's possible yeah. if for some reason somebody starts to AD Mitchell or Thomas is falling a little bit. That's possible. I just don't ever see them climbing up higher than like 25. Yeah. So what that does is if there is a faller, the Bills will probably start picking up the phone. But unless there is, they're not going to be the ones being aggressive, getting up to 20. I just don't see it. Got it. Got it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I do want to give a giant shout out to today's sponsor. And that just happens to be BetUS. March Madness is going on right now. I'm not sure about you, Kev, but I don't watch college basketball much. But I do bet on it quite a bit. I normally ask my chat to help me out with what I end up <laughs> placing. Guys, listen, the best thing about it is, is that they are matching 125% of your first three deposits the second that you sign up. And as long as you're active once every six months, you get 10% gambler's insurance, guys. Link is in description right now if you want to hop on. If you're feeling froggy about March Madness, Major League Baseball is right around the corner, maybe even hockey, go on ahead and check out BetUS. Proud sponsor right over here. Here's a brief message from them.
BetUS, America's favorite sportsbook and casino. Live betting and racebook. We're celebrating 30 years with a historic offer. A 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits. Plus 10% gambler's insurance. Get started today. BetUS, where the game begins. Absolutely. Absolutely love it. But, okay. So with Johnny Newton, you like quite a bit. Are you on the Fisk train at all or no? Yeah, Fisk... He's interesting because he's his definitely combine got, was nice. Yeah, his combine he's, was the best of. I mean, really anybody there. <laughs> yeah, so. he's definitely rising the ranks. I definitely would love him. Um, uh, I just, I've been told by scouts before that like you got to stop looking at like what you perceive like the big boards to say his value is. Um, and his value is probably more in the fifties and sixties, more around where they pick in the second round. Yeah. Um. So I got to stop thinking about it in that regard. But scouts have told me that like, because a big board says he's somewhere does not necessarily mean where he actually is. And the difference between the 28th and the 48th pick is generally uh, fractions. Um, um, so it's more tiers that, that scouts look at. And the thing that bothers me about Fisk is I think he's a second round pick, right? Straight up. Yeah. Um, yeah. But if he's really in the bottom of that first or early or t- top of the second tier, it's such a fine line to really go through it. Um, but I, I I obviously would feel a lot better with Byron Murphy or, or Johnny Newton. And then you could argue Chris Jenkins, Sweat, or Fisk are all kind of in that mold of of what's left. But I, I kind of view all three of them as second-round picks. So Bill's Mafia, let's start prepping ourselves for a defensive tackle at the 28th win. overall pick. I think that's something that we might as well just start accepting unless there's an AD Mitchell or unless there is a Brian Thomas Jr. there, which is unlikely. So go ahead they did just bring in Christian Boyd today for a top 30 visit, which is. I do like player. Christian Boyd. Like I do him. like Christian Boyd a lot. Fifth, fourth or fifth round pick, um, which is yeah. encouraging that maybe they'll wait on it, Dan. Yeah, maybe, maybe I did like him quite a bit on several mock drafts I've done, which by the way, I'm definitely planning on doing a mock draft next week. Once we have Z bot and Mario, both of us on so we can go through with it should be definitely exciting but uh no i mean and so i loved him as well would edge be a possibility for us you think and so i've seen uh, edge thrown around like every I, now I see it's going down at, at every moment like because obviously they brought in casey to hill um yeah obviously if there's a faller in the first round i think that anything's possible um, you know, I've definitely seen some stuff. I mean, Bean was right, you know, front and center for some pro days uh, yeah. that had Chris Braswell there. Uh, yeah. So it, it's exciting, but I don't know unless Dallas Turner fell, which I wouldn't see. Jared Verse, uh, yeah. Latou from UCLA, maybe Chop Robinson. But outside of yeah. the top four, I don't necessarily yeah. see it. But those Darius Robinson, Braswells um, of the world, I definitely think could be possible. Uh, Neeland uh, could be possibilities in the second, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, worst case scenario, third or fourth as well. Like that one guy out of Troy Solomon as yep. well. Vaughn Solomon. Solomon. Yep. He could potentially be a target at the end of the day, especially if Vaughn Miller just like it's – I'm still crossing my fingers. I'm still crossing my fingers that his his recovery was just taking a hell of a lot longer. Yeah. Especially since he was getting up there in age. And we'll just get a 75% Vaughn Miller next year. That's I'm, the goal. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, hell, I mean, we're paying the dude enough at the end of the day. But um, I mean, we have to talk about the dig stuff too, right? Because that's been dominating social media. What's your thoughts on that? I just don't think there's anything there. I just think it's another day in paradise to me. I've learned my lesson from him. Um, and he's told us in press conferences himself that like never care what I tweet. Um, and I think we there's enough information there that like sure he was frustrated probably with josh's like press tour last year instead of like doing the uh practice in the backyard uh if we're gonna act like the practice in the backyard is which wins wins a super bowl i guess like i guess the practice in the backyard is super bowl uh trait but i, yeah. I don't really think that has anything to do with anything like famous alan iverson quote saying it's practice like um to me i i that's great but you don't think that josh and Diggs are on the same page they are yeah. Um, and he, he knows that his career took off as well in Buffalo. There's no yeah. better situation than a top three quarterback. Exactly. Top three AFC team and a team that's always floor is the divisional round. Like you're not yeah. going to find a better combo than that. Um, yeah. 
outside yeah, of the yeah. Super Bowl champion Chiefs, and the Bills are just not trading him to the Chiefs regardless. So now I think I might have asked you about this too, because surprisingly enough, I get people in the chat all the time over on my channel saying, We gotta trade him. We have to get rid of him. I feel like a lot of people still haven't forgiven him for that drop pass in the uh, right in the divisional, which I certainly had a hard time doing myself. But I think it's just a question over and over and over again. Like, what the fuck happened to that guy? Right? Like, what happened to him after week six of last year? I mean, I thought that maybe he was just hiding an injury or something, or he was playing sore, or say, for example, Gabe Davis's production just ended up, you know, sort of spiraling down the drain. And that just made those double teams that much more effective, or did it have to do with the fact that we were running the ball a hell of a lot more? It just, yes. it just didn't make sense, right? Yeah. You hit it on the head. They ran the ball a lot more. They dominated the, the, the Cowboys by cramming it down their throat. Um, mm. There definitely was some situations where teams were bracketing them and the Bills finally, instead of doing the Dorsey, forcing it to him. So here's the issue in the first eight weeks. All I heard was all the Bills have is Diggs. What happens when Diggs doesn't catch it? That what is happens, true. What it's happens? It's funny how that works. We right? need a receiver two, three, four, five, and six. Like, where's everybody else? Um, and then everybody else contributes. Kincaid turns into, you know, a top tight end. Yeah. And Knox starts to get back in the fold and Shakir starts to show up. And now everybody's yeah. like, what about Diggs? So it's it's just a matter of like a little bit more balance would have been a little bit better. But ultimately, teams are bracketing him. The Bills started running the ball a lot. Joe Brady came in with effective running back play. Even Thank saw God. Ty Johnson at times. And the Bills were in games where they were dominating running the ball in stretches. Um, so that yeah. kind of ate away at some of his production uh, for sure. But I mean, he had a ton of targets. Josh has missed him kind of at the end of the year himself. And yeah. then the drop. I mean, Diggs was just as involved, just as game changing late in playoff, the fourth quarter of playoff games. Like uh, ultimately you would like to see a little bump there, but it's definitely yeah. offensive coordinator related, running back related, tight end related, uh, second and tertiary option related. Now, obviously he's going to be here because his contract became fully guaranteed this past weekend. But yes. The question now becomes next year next off season yep. say for example whatever receiver we get in the draft like shows out this year for a rookie yep we think that he could potentially be a one and do you think that there's a world uh where we walk away we trade him or we release him next i think he's got two years left as a buffalo bill potentially two. longer if they work something out but it's a two-year deal in my opinion um this year's definite you know anyone saying otherwise someone would have to give us multiple picks and if that happens okay um, but yeah. it would have to be something crazy. The Bills would eat too much money. But next year, same kind of thing. The Bills could get out of it and save a few million dollars. Um, you know, they're going to pay him 26 and they owe 20, 21 ish. I just don't think you eat $21 million to walk away to save five. Yeah, no. I mean, he's worth, he's going to be worth $5 million next year uh, because he rests yeah. his dead money, anyways. Yeah. Um, so he's on the roster, but there's a little bit more flexibility next year if someone says, here's a first late first i mean they could yeah. they could on an older receiver i guess they yeah. could swing the trigger on it yeah um but he's on the, it's two-year deal outside of I someone mean, throwing a draft pick at us it's a two-year deal i mean listen i think honestly with that in curtis samuel who has a, a very good top three great separation yeah. i think that's going to help digs his game as well and say for example that one of these like second third rounders come in and they yep. just absolutely dominate I really don't think that that you can bracket them anymore. If right. somebody can actually be like a huge threat. Now, if we're stuck on the whole, uh, let's say for example, uh, like a defensive tackle at 28 and we're forced to go in the second round receivers, I'm going to rattle off some names that I think could realistically be in the second or the third round. And I want you to tell me if you think they'd be a fit or if they're overrated. Number one, right. number one, I was high on this guy. Then I wasn't, I'm warming up <laughs> to him again. Troy Franklin out of Oregon. Yeah, seamless fit. The Bills like him a lot. I do have that on pretty good authority from what they've done and followed him around and done with visits and meetings. Uh, would be a pure fit. Um, you can question his, is he going to be, can he Can he beat with his lean stature? Can he work out? Reminds me of Devontae Smith, though. So, like, Devontae Smith's a great player. Will he run the entire route tree? Will he get off of press coverage? Um, remains to be seen. But especially now, you, you asked me about the second round. Uh, there's just no risk for me. I I, th I think he's a fit there. There's zero risk. Okay, one guy that's probably the most controversial that I've seen based off of my content, Keon Coleman 
out of Florida State. Talk people to are gonna like the size, colors, man. Like people either love them or they hate them. There's no um, in between. He's an intriguing prospect because that 40 time is no one's ever effective ever. Like beside like Anquan Bolden, like no yeah. one's ever been effective at that speed. Yeah. Um, but however, he does everything else super well, like including mm-hmm. the gauntlet drill, including a lot of his other metrics, including his nine res. Um, yeah. It's so it's wild too, because he ran that four, six forty, but then at the gauntlet, I think he was clocked like close to like 21 fastest miles. Guy in the gauntlet, it, just, which... it just didn't make sense. So that would give you encouraging that he would be on the end of it, that it shouldn't matter. Um, yeah. It will affect his draft stock because people will have to consider a bust label there um, because the different series like DK Metcalf, you know, blew out the gym and it was, his was kind of opposite. Like he's really good athletically. Is he going to be a good receiver? Um, because he didn't do any, like didn't do a ton in college. And it was like, clearly yes. Uh, but yeah. Keon Coleman is intriguing to me. Um, question mark at the first round again. He, so he is, is in that Franklin range, but. I yeah. think he's had enough production at big time college football uh, mixed with um, his, all of his metrics minus is 40 that I would be okay taking him. I'd be a little bit more shook up at like pick 18. Um, yeah. Yeah. But 60. Yeah. Run that card up. If it's him or Franklin, for sure. 60, write it up. Okay. Last guy. And then I'll give you the uh, floor for like any guys that you think we should stay away from at all costs. Um, another target. Xavier Leggett out of South Carolina. I mean, his metrics are just as good too. So yeah, that is, it is, he's it faster, is a, he's faster yeah. man. Yeah. He is. Um, you know, there's definitely some uh, question marks about him in zone coverage. Um, yeah. Can he find the soft spots in zone? If team, teams are running too high, is he going to be the guy that can find the honey hole? Um, you know, kind of similar to what Diggs can do. You've seen Davis do okay at it. Is he going to have the body positioning and control to get his feet down? He has shown some ability to do so. Um, once again, though, if the bills go D line in the first, I'm probably all in. And if Leggett is the guy there, I'm pretty excited. I think at that spot, I'm good on it. Any of those three though, ahead of other players like AD Mitchell or Brian Thomas jr. Or yeah. for me, even lad McConkey. Yeah. I, I think those guys are better, but this is the next tier, um, tier three, we'll call it. And I do would be very excited about any of them. I would be at 60. <laughs> Any of those. And then Worthy's yeah. been going up and down as well. My concern with the guy is, is that his weight on PFF right now is a lie. I'm pretty sure he clocked in at like 165 at the, the smallest guy. And, and since Brosco, like since guys, I mean, he's one of the smallest players ever. And so I know, and I feel like Devontae Smith, like, I feel like he's an anomaly as far as being that undersized and still being effective. Yeah. I mean, I like the 4-2 speed. I mean, that's great. But, I mean, when John Ross was also a 4-2 speed guy, where is he today? But Reminds me of the same player, for being honest. Exactly. Like, I am very, very concerned, even within our own division, just picturing him lined up against, like, a Sauce Gardner, like a Jalen Ramsey. He's going to get get jammed into oblivion. Um, Yeah. So, for me, I'm out. Um, could I see a team that could utilize him? Maybe, maybe a certain air or air Royale or Quattrell kind of system like yeah. LA runs. Uh-huh. Um, sure. I okay. think that there is, could he work out with a, with a kind of a more of an improv guy like Mahomes in a situation to where they'll try to use him like Tyreek possibility. Mm-hmm. I just don't see an around a running 12 personnel system. Like the bills are starting to run and a guy that's got to find soft zones in the honey hole. Uh, we were just talking about that with Legat. I, I don't, I don't think so. But that speed is dynamic enough to where if he does, if he is able to get his hands on the ball, he's gonna get open. Yeah. There yeah. could be a bright future. So he's one of those guys that I'm gonna put it low, but I'm gonna put it like good. two out of ten. Yeah, he's, that he's really, really good. Yeah, like excellent, like top of the league, good. Like uh-huh. six out of ten that he stinks. Yeah, um, and two out of ten that he's good. Like, <laughs> two out of 10 that he's good. so that's like four out of 10 that he's at least good yeah but that 60 percent rate to me is just too much of 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 an unknown oh my god last but not least sorry i just see names that i'm super excited about javon baker you see do you talk to me about him because yeah i, I mean he's he's a good fit like he wins 50 50 balls he finds a soft spot in zones um, you know, you can, he claims, you know, he went to a smaller school, obviously, if that's what you want to consider it. Um, yeah. he's, you know, hovering around the third round right now. The bills don't yeah. really have a third. 
So does yeah. that mean they have to overdraft him in the range you're talking about? Most yeah. likely. I don't know if they can hang out and hope for him in the mid fourth. Yeah. I just don't see it. They could always yeah. trade up though. Um, a couple of guys, he, he is a guy that I, 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 I like a whole lot um, and does a lot of good things. While six one two zero eight has a pretty good, um, you know, ranking score with all of his analytics. Uh, he's, he's definitely a guy that would work out fairly well um, with, with Josh Allen, but you know, that UCF connection, are you, does he remind you too much Dave of Davis. Dave Davis? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, maybe still a little bit different of a player, but has that same vert a uh, little bit smaller, uh, but ultimately pretty, very similar that maybe the bills are thinking about him in the fourth round to kind of back to back repeat. Why not replace Gabe Davis with Gabe Davis, a cheap Gabe Davis. Um, yeah. Why not? It, it could definitely be in the planes in the fourth round. I really like him, but another name to watch out for though. And a guy that I think is tape is amazing. Um, however, I'm not sure if the bills would be in the market right now, but Malik Washington from Virginia um, is okay. a stud. He is going to be a 10 year slot receiver for somebody. The problem is where the bills have that slot opening, but he's super good. His PFF, um, kind of rem- rank is, his PFF ranks like 125. So is that like a, it's probably about a fourth, maybe. Yeah, but there's a lot of teams that like. I think PFF has him the lowest of anybody. His yeah. his, his current standard deviation score is around the the, the, the third round. Okay. Uh, but certainly could be in the fourth if if they're right. But he is uh, he's studly uh, to me, and I think he does a lot of things well. His biggest challenge is that he's mostly been a slot in his uh, in his life. The same kind of thing that people try to say about McConkey is probably more true about Malik Washington. Uh, yeah. But dude, he's watch him film on him. He's ridiculous. I mean, you're talking about 1400 yards out of Virginia, 10, nine or 10 touchdowns. Uh, I I mean, he's, he's a game changer and a guy I'm going to tell you right now is going to go to a team. He's got a seven, six, nine Raz. So he's pretty athletic. Um, you know, ran a four, four, seven, he's going to go to a team, uh, and be effective. So him and Roman Wilson are two guys I really like. Um, but there's lots. Yeah. Um, so I feel like I we know. have something in Shakir too, but I guess. It but if they change their mind and they go other ways in the first two rounds, Baker's interesting. Roman Wilson's interesting. And Malik Washington are very interesting. If the bills are just trying to stockpile talent. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, really outside of that as well. And so, I mean, obviously you have, you, uh, you have Jerry Rice's son. Yep. You got Brendan Rice. He's been on the names, but like question we like, we obviously don't have a third round pick. And I mean, I'm thinking with like 11 picks, it's kind of hard for me to assume that we're going to like walk away in the draft with 11 guys. Right. I, I think that we're planning on trading up. And so do you think that we're going to like try and trade up back into the third at all? Or I think that there's a play? fair, fair assumption to be had here, yeah. especially if the receiver position is the one we're targeting. So we're talking about yeah. receiver now, if that's the position we're targeting, and they like, you know, whoever, J- Javon Baker, to your point earlier. Yeah. I would say it's very likely that a four and a five are moved um, to somebody that's looking to get out because the Bills will be eager to make sure one of these guys in this range would be selected by the Bills. And, and Bean's never been shy to trade back into the third. He's done it a couple of times oh, in his career. Man, I am absolutely thrilled. But Baker, Baker's a solid football player, man. Um, yeah. PFF, so PFF likes him, you know, pretty, they like him a good amount there. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, they think, do. Conversely to, to, to Washington, uh, they have the highest down. of anyone. Yeah. He's yeah. down, man. He's, he's all the way down here. I mean, maybe it's the size they're putting it, but I mean, five, eight, 194. He's like, dude, he's built, he's built for his height. He is. He's a built guy. And like, there we go. Slot only type of receiver to his lack of size and strength. But he's, I mean, that last line is what it is about for me for Josh Allen. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So look at his score. Look what they gave him though. In 2023, they said he was the third best receiver. So it doesn't make a ton of sense. Yeah, no. Um, third best receiver in the nation. Why are you 125? That doesn't make any sense. Uh, but that's the film I watch is that he is literally the third best receiver in the nation. He reminds me, I mean, tank Dell was a little bit better with the, with the speed top end speed. And a lot of people are like tank Dell's not gonna be able to do anything. Um, Malik Washington is a little bit different of a prospect to me. Um, but boy, would I like to get my hands on him. Um, he was one of going to be my double dip candidate. Like he was going to be the second guy I wanted. Yeah. Uh, but he is going to be a guy that gets open and you're going to say, how do teams let him get to the third or fourth? Well, cause yeah. apparently be, you know, he's, di- he's different. 194 translate to the NFL that, yeah. that weight. 
<laughs> no, no, man. I can get it. I, dude, I get it. Well, man, I'll tell you what, folks, we're so excited to be back. We know we took a little bit of time off scheduling difficulties. However, we will have hopefully all four, all four hosts here next week, same time Thursday. And we're going to be doing a mock draft for everyone at Roundtable Sports. We sincerely appreciate you tuning in. And Kev, is there anything you'd like to say? Okay, I love it. Bet US. I mean, I think I like I had BYU in the top Elite Eight. Uh, it was it was a bummer <laughs> situation for me. So I'll be on Bet US later. Um, My man. Trying to cure up for that. But honestly, man, love the AFC East round table. I mean, we're gonna bring the fire all year, just as any other team would. And I think that there's so much to talk about here and got a lot to talk about in April with all of the draft picks, 11 draft choices that other teams wish they had. And the Bills are going to have this flexibility to move around the board. And no one's going to want to see the Bills add a pressure defensive tackle and another receiver for Josh Allen. So no, never. It's never. going to increase everything, Dan. And so the division is still ours. I'm willing to put money down on it now. Folks, we appreciate you. We'll see you next Thursday. Same time, same place. Later.